Uh, so today we are going to study about uh, overview of Ezekiel's temple and uh, January uh, four Sundays probably we will uh, study about Ezekiel's temple. As you know, the history of Redemption series book number 11 is about Ezekiel's temple. Although uh, senior pastor Everett Ron Park left manuscripts, but it requires a lot of work such as to make a table of content, right? Uh, the Reverend Aaron Park didn't leave manuscript as a book, right? He he left the manuscript as a sermon notes, as a, as a, as a as a, as, a, uh, as, a, as the uh, raw material, right? So in order to make these manuscripts into uh, convert this manuscript into the book. Uh, you have to choose which one comes to introduction, which one comes to being number one, which one comes to being number two, right? So making a table of content is actually quite an uh, important work. So uh, that takes a lot of time. Also making a chart and a map, right? Uh, according to the contents, right? For the easier, for the easier understanding, making uh, a chart or map that is also necessary, so that also takes a time, right? And especially if some publisher tries to put a 3D floor map, 3D floor map, right? Although we don't have all the measurements uh, regarding to Ezekiel Temple, but yet we know some measurement about the length of the payment and the, 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 big, uh, the entire sizes and everything. So uh, according to it, we try our best to make a 3D uh, floor map of Ezekiel Temple. And the professional advisor said that actually will take very long time. So uh, uh, as we announced, uh, Pengang Jail is looking forward, looking forward to publish, uh, publish the 11th history of Neptune series by the 6th of August, 6th of August this year. So firstly, I would like to ask you to pray and support this work, right? Uh, so that uh, it will not be delayed, it will not be postponed, it will not be hindered by anything else, any, any other thing, but uh, uh, it will be published as is planned, as according to God's will. Amen? Thank you. So, introduction today. Uh, Reverend Abraham Park said that the Ezekiel Temple is actually a blueprint of the Holy City, New Jerusalem. The Ezekiel Temple is a blueprint. So if we understand Ezekiel Temple, right, we will understand New Jerusalem. Right? So this will be New Jerusalem, right? So first lamp of New Jerusalem, right? So uh, Ezekiel Temple is a blueprint of the holy city, New Jerusalem. Although the pattern of the temple, right, the measurement of temple and what, what, is, what has to be there uh, was shown and given to Prophet Ezekiel in a vision. It has never been built historically. Ezekiel Temple has never been built historically, right? Furthermore, it actually cannot be built. Ezekiel Temple cannot be built or cannot exist because some elements, some elements of the, some characteristic of the temple, Ezekiel Temple, is eternal, eternal, eternity, right? It is related to eternity, element of eternity. So how a fallen human being can build something that is eternal? So Ezekiel Temple actually is not for us to build historically, but it is to see and understand what it means. If we look at Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 9, Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 9, it says, It will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. And there will be a very many fish, for these waters go there, and the others become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. 
Right. It talks about the river that come out, comes out from the, uh, the temple, and where, wherever this river goes, right, every living creature is said, right, every living creature will live, right, and then every living thing will live as well. Every living thing, everything will live, right. Also, in Ezekiel chapter 42, verse 12, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12, it says, uh, and by the river on its bank, on one side and the other, uh, will grow all kinds of tree of tree for food. Their leaves will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. Right? Which means these trees on the the bank of the river will have will bear fruit, will have fruits all the time, all the time. It will never fail to bear fruits. Have you seen any tree like that? Normally, a tree bears a fruit uh, once a year, right? And when, once the, when, when the fruit is taken away, then there is no fruit. Right? And uh, also, among many trees, some are uh, not able to bear fruit every year, right? But then this tree, Bible says, it bears fruit every time, and it trees will be with uh, tr trees will never be without fruits. Trees will never be without. Fruit. And that will happen when this river goes by, right? So uh, this actually shows us that uh, Ezekiel Temple is related to eternity and has the characteristic of eternity, eternal characteristic with it. Therefore, Ezekiel Temple uh, cannot be built by human hand because a fallen human being cannot build something that is eternal or something that has a characteristic of eternity. So, uh, thing number one today is when the vision of the new temple was given. So, time, right? When the vision of the new temple was given. Firstly, uh, Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1. He said, in the 25th year of our exile, right? So in the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month, on the 10th of the month, and in the 14th year after the city was taken, in the 14th year. Right, so it gives us three uh, uh, clues about when uh, this vision was given, right? First, is the 25th year of the exile. 25th year. Right. 25th year of the exile. We know that there were three occasions that uh, when the people of Israel were taken to Babylon, isn't it? There were three uh, exile, three deportations, right? So first deportation was what? 605, right? 605 BC. The king was Kim, right? Jehoiakim first. And then second, uh, second, second time of deportation to Babylon was 597, 597 BC. And the king was Jehoiakim. Chin, right? So King Chin, right? And the third, which is last, is 586 BC. And the king was Serekiah. Serekiah, right? Right, among these three occasions, the prophet Ezekiel was taken to Babylon during the second exile, second exile, which is this, right? 597 BC. So the 25 years should be calculated from 597 BC, right? 597 BC. So if we use the inclusive calculation calculating method, right, which is uh, calculate the year that uh, Ezekiel was taken from taken to Babylon and the and the year, right? So if we use that inclusive calculation inclusive method that the 
25th year from 597 BC becomes 573 BC. 573. 573 is the 25th year since the second exile to Babylon. Also, secondly, it gives a sec uh, another hint. It's the 14 years after the six was seized, right? <coughs> 14 years after the city was seized. <coughs> right, when the Jerusalem, city Jerusalem was seized, there are three exiles, right? There are three occasions. Uh, first occasion, first deportation, the Jerusalem was still there, right? Second exile, Jerusalem was still there. Uh, we, we say the total destruction, right? The end of the southern Judah or end of Israel is 586 BC when the, uh, the third deportation happened, right? And the third deportation happened, the city of Jerusalem also collapsed and nothing left there, right? So the time of the city of Jerusalem or seized is 586 BC, 586 BC. So this 14 years should be calculated from 586 BC here, right? So if we calculate uh, 14 years from 586 BC, it also uh, uh, becomes uh, 573 BC here. 573 BC. This one also has to be inclusive method, right? This is uh, this is not after the year when the city was seized, but then the year that city was seized, that is the first year, right? And then second year, third year. So 14th year of, uh, of uh, 14th year after the city was seized is 573 BC. Right. So if we calculate from the uh, in the perspective of those who uh, were taken to Babylon during the first deportation, which happened in, in 605 BC, right? Uh, this year when Prophet Ezekiel received vision was how many years after their deportation? First deportation? It's a, uh, if we calculate, it's a 30, 33rd, actually. 33rd. 33, 33, but uh, 30. Also, it's an inclusive method, so it's a 33rd year, 33rd year. So six of, from 605, 573 is 33, right? Right, what we can understand from here is, uh, it was a time when people had no hope for restoration and no hope to go back to Jerusalem, isn't it? It's been already 30 years. 30 years is about one generation, right, we said. So the, when the father was taken to Babylon, the son became 30 years old already, right? So this generation has no hope that we could be restored or this, uh, this, they, can, they could go back to land of Cana or they could go back to their country. They could go back and restore their country, right? After the 33 years, that is the time where, where there is no hope where there is no hope for the restoration, there is no hope to go back to home country. Yet, this was a time that God chose and gave this vision to Prophet Ezekiel to enhance, to give them a hope. No, I remember you, right? I am here. I am the living God. And I decided, uh, my plan is for you to be restored. My plan is for you to go back to your home country and rebuild your home country. So when there was no hope, God uh, gave this vision to uh, encourage people and give them a hope that God still lives and God will do His work. God will restore us. And the thirdly, It was the tenth day of the first month. It was the tenth day of the first month. It was the tenth day of the first month, right? It's chapter 41, uh, chapter 40, verse 1, it gives a three uh, detail, right? 
25th and the 14th year after the city was taken, and then on the 10th of the month, the 10th of the first month. What's the significance of the 10th day of the first month? Do you remember the name of the first month in Jewish calendar? Nisan, right? Nisan. It's Ko'abi or Nisan, right? Nisan. So what is the significance of the, about the 10th day of the Nisan? 10th day of the Nisan. What happens? It's the day people of Israel has to choose a Passover lamb, right? Select the Passover lamb. On the 10th day of the first month is the day the Israel, all the Israelites, right, they should choose, they should select a Passover lamb, and they should have kept it until when? 13th day of the first month, right? For four days they should keep it and observe it, whether they, it, it has any faults or uh, flaws or it has any uh, de uh, uh, defect, right? And then on the 14th day, they kill and burn and, and uh, gave as a Passover lamb, right? Passover lamb. So, uh, the... Uh, the, the answer of the first uh, circle number one is Passover lamb, Passover lamb. <coughs> Passover lamb was prepared on the 10th day of the month of Abib, right? Uh, shall we read Exodus chapter 12, verse 2 to 3? Can anyone read it for us? It's there on the lecture note. This month shall be the beginning of months for your, for your, it is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the 10th of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their fathers, Households, a lamb for each household. Amen. See, uh, the, on the tenth day of this month, they are each want to take a lamb for themselves, right? So Passover lamb should be selected on the tenth day of the first month and kept until thirteenth day. And then on the fourteenth day, the lamb should be taken, right? And as we learned before, this is deeply related to Jesus Christ, who came as a Passover lamb and saved us from our sins. So this itself is deeply related to Jesus Christ. And also, during the Exodus, after taking the Passover lamb, on the 15th day of the first month, what happened? They departed Ramses, Egypt, right? After keeping the Passover, right? Now the people of Israel departed from Ramses, and they left Egypt, right? So likewise, God informed the captivities in Babylon will be finished just as the Israelites were freed from Egypt. The so tenth day of the first month, it kind of uh, automatically rings the mind, rings the bell of the people of Israel that, ah, it is a time that God uh, performed His miracle to liberate our ancestors from Egypt, right? So, uh, the prophet is here when he received this uh, vision. He is uh, automatically, he is ought to remember, he is ought, uh, he is ought to uh, remind, be reminded about, ah, it's about liberation, it's about freedom, it's about God's restoration. Right? And secondly, uh, the, the people of Israel enter the land of Canaan on the 10th day of the first month as well. So after the 40 years of wilderness journey, right, they finally went into the 41st campsite, which is the plains of Moab, right? And then they crossed the Jordan River and reached the last campsite, which is Gilgal, right? And Gilgal was located in the land of Canaan. And the Bible says the date when they reached and encamped in Gilgal was the 10th day of the first month as well. That is written in Joshua chapter 4, verse 19. Can anyone read it for us? Joshua chapter 4 verse 19. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th of the first month and came at Gilgal on the eastern edge of Jericho. Mm, amen. See? So, once again, God gave a hope of the coming day when they will return to uh, 
You can say land of Canaan, or you can say promised land, you can say holy land, you can say Jerusalem, right? Although they were captives in Babylon at present. So this vision of the Ezekiel temple was to give a hope to the people of Israel that God is going to restore. God is going to perform His work. Verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1. 
I uh, really one more time for you. He says, in the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month, in the 14th year after the city was taken, on that same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me there. Right? On that same day, in Hebrew, is Hayom Hazeh. Hayom Hazeh. I think... Uh, in Korean lecture note, it's uh, printed correctly, but in English, no, English lecture note, it may, not, uh, may have not been printed correctly, so I'll write here. Ha Yom Haze. Ha Je. Right? Ha Yom Haze. Is from here, right? I think the, in English version, it may be uh, the, uh, twisted a little bit, right? So, why it means is a ritual, it's a ritual translation is on the exact day, on the exact day, on the exact day. So, what is on the exact day? On the exact day, of when Prophet Ezekiel was taken to Babylon. Right? It's a, on the exact day when the Prophet Ezekiel was taken to Babylon. It is talking about, it is, it's, it's happening on the same day, right? It says in the 50, 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month, in the 14th year of, after the city was taken, on that same day, right? It's, 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 it, it is talking about it happened all in the same day, but also it also refers that the, it's the exact day when you were taken to uh, the, the prophet Ezekiel was taken to Babylon on the same day. So as, as I said, this also was an incident of God giving prophet Ezekiel for a hope for returning to Jerusalem. Thing number two, the place, the vision of the new temple was given, right? Where the vision of the new temple was received. Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 2. In the visions of God, he brought me into the land of Israel and sent me on a very high mountain. And, it, and on it, to the south, there was a structure like a city, right? So the Bible says, it's here chapter 40 verse 2 says, the place, the venue that he received his vision was a very high mountain, right? Very high mountain. The very high mountain in the Bible, or according to Jewish culture, refers to Mount, which mountain? Mount, Mount Zion, right? Zion Mountain. Mount Zion was not the physically highest mountain. However, uh, according to Jewish culture, according to uh, the according to Jewish culture, according to Bible, that the Mount Zion was regarded as the highest mountain, highest mountain. So when Ezekiel chapter forty verse two says that he brought me to the very high mountain, it means Mount Zion. Right? So why Mount Zion is regarded as the highest mountain? Firstly, because it is the mountain where God dwells, right? It is the mountain where God came down, or it is the mountain where God dwells. God is the highest being, isn't it? Is there anyone who is higher than God? No, right? Even a king, right? Even a king of the nation, even a king, or even a president of America, right? Uh, is not higher than our God, right? Our God is the highest being. So where... God dwells, and where God lives, and where God comes down is the highest place. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 5. The Lord is exalted, for He dwells on high. He has filled Zion with His justice and righteousness. The Bible says He dwell, God dwells on high, and that high place is Zion. Right? He fills Zion with justice and uh, righteousness. Also Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 12. And they shall come and shout for joy on the height of Zion. And they shall be radiant over the bounty of the Lord. 
So secondly, why Mount Zion is the highest mountain? It is because uh, it is the most holy place. It is the most holy place. In the Bible, God is most holy one. Yes. God is most holy. And where God dwells must be the most holy place. So Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 4. It says, This is the law of the house. Its entire area on the top of the mountain all around shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. This is the law of the house of the Lord, God's temple, right? It's, it's here, it's the Ezekiel 43 verse 12 talks about the Ezekiel temple, right? And this house, house of the law, should be at the, at, the, at the top of the mountain, and that place, entire area, should be most holy, right? Most holy. And Psalm verse 2, Psalm chapter 2 verse 6, Psalm 2 verse 6. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. So, uh, uh, Mount Zion is regarded as a holy mountain. So today, you and I have to enter New Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. The reason why we are studying is Kyo Temple. Is it to boast about your knowledge? Do you know about Ezekiel Temple? I know this. I know the structure. I know the length. I know the height of the Ezekiel Temple. Is that what we are studying about? No. It's in the, in, the, in, the, in the introduction, I explained the reason why we are studying Ezekiel Temple is because Ezekiel Temple is the blueprint of New Jerusalem. So if we understand Ezekiel Temple, we may be prepared, we may be enabled, we may be allowed to enter New Jerusalem that will uh, come to us in our future. Right? So you and I have to enter New Jerusalem. And you and I have to become a temple for the Holy Spirit, for our God. Right? In order to do this, our lives must be holy. Our lives must be holy. Because Zion, where, the, uh, where, where this temple was built, temple's vision was given, right? is holy. Right? So, our lives must be holy. Our lives must be holy. What I meant by this is our words, our language has to be holy. Our deeds, our action, our behavior must be holy. Also, our thoughts, our uh, uh, soul, our heart, our, our uh, thoughts must be holy as well. If you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See? Three things. Our spirit, our soul, our body must be preserved without blame. Right? Our words, right? our behavior, our thoughts must be holy. We cannot neglect any of it. My behavior is holy, but my thought is not holy. My, my thought is holy, but my, my, my word, my language is not holy. Right? Well, my language is holy, but my thought, my, my behavior is not holy. Right? And that is not uh, our spirit, our uh, soul, and our body being preserved without blame. So when we think about becoming holy, right, being sanctified, right, our words, our deeds, our thoughts must be, uh, must be sanctified and must become holy. And when we uh, become holy, then we can actually become a temple for the Holy Spirit and we can enter New Jerusalem. Also, if you look at Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 to 45, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 to 45, you can see that God is holy and God is asking the people of God to become holy as well. So I pray for those who, are, those who came to the Lord's Common Church this morning to be sanctified by uh, the Word of God and prayer so that we can uh, become 
a temple for the Holy Spirit, and we can enter New Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. Thirdly, why Mount Zion is the highest mountain? Because it is where God's word is proclaimed. Because it is where God's word is proclaimed. Isaiah 2, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. I'll read it for you. Now it will come about that in the last day, sorry, uh, I'll read it once again. Now it will come about that in the last days, the mount, mountain of the house of the Lord will be established at the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. And many people will come and say, Come, let us, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his ways, and that we may walk in his path. For the Lord will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The Bible says that the Lord will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Mount Zion or Jerusalem is the place where the word of God, where the law of God, where God's way is being taught and being preached and being uh, expounded. Today, where the word of God is proclaimed is spiritual Zion and spiritual Jerusalem. Right? If Zion and Jerusalem is the where the Lord is being preached and the, the word of God is being proclaimed, today, where the word of God is proclaimed is the spiritual Zion and spiritual Jerusalem. Today, where the word of them to be sure is proclaimed and explained is the spiritual Zion and Jerusalem. Therefore, I believe that you and I came up to Mount Zion today. Amen. We are in Mount Zion today. What does Jerusalem mean? What does the word Jerusalem mean? Jerusalem means the city of peace. Right? City of peace. Jeru means city. Salem means peace. So Jerusalem is the city of peace. What does Pyongyang Jail mean? Pyongyang Jail. Peace number one, right? Yes. Peace number one. Or uh, in Malaysian word, peace one, right? Peace one. Like a Malaysian word, peace one. Peace one church is Pyongyang Jail Church. It is not a coincidence that God gave us such wonderful church name. So as we are at the spiritual giant, where the word of God is being proclaimed, proclaimed now we must receive the word of God. And we must understand the word of God. Amen? Amen. Prophet Ezekiel was there. He was given the vision. But if he refused to receive the vision, then God's will will be uh, jeopardized and canceled. Right? God's will cannot be uh, fulfilled. And if uh, Prophet Ezekiel was not able to understand this vision that God gave to him, right? also God's will will not be fulfilled. So, yes, being in the Mount Zion, being in the spiritual Mount Zion, being where the word of God is being proclaimed is, is good, is a wonderful thing. But if we are here in the spiritual Mount Zion, then our duty is to receive the word of God with a grateful heart. Secondly, we have to understand the word of God that we receive. We have to receive the vision of this Kiel Temple. We have to understand the pattern of the Ezekiel Temple. And as we said, as I said, right, the reason why God gave Prophet Ezekiel the pattern of the Ezekiel Temple, flow map of the Ezekiel Temple, was to give him, give God's people a hope for a restoration. So if we understood the pattern or the flow map of the Ezekiel Temple, finally we should be able to receive a hope for true restoration. True restoration. Do you remember what does uh, history of redemption means? History of redemption, creation, fall, and the restoration and consummation. We can say simply, right? What's what's in the what's in the end? In the end, God will perform and bring about 
restoration and consummation. So this, I, I hope this book 11, and I hope this lecture regarding to uh, Ezekiel Temple may give you a hope for God's true restoration and God's true consummation. Amen? Right, and uh, big number three today is the order of visit in Ezekiel Temple. Order of visit in Ezekiel Temple. Now, Prophet Ezekiel, by God's great might, visited each place of the temple. This happens in a vision, right? Happens in a vision, but uh, he was able to visit it every place, right? So let's see the order of his visit. Uh, we are not going to learn uh, in detail. We are not going to learn in detail, but let's read one by one. Can we? Mm. So shall we read it together? Uh, just read it as the lecture note says. Uh, the, the name of the place may be a little bit differ, different from the uh, map that you have, right? So, it uh, doesn't matter. Today, let's follow the lecture note and let's read these 25 places. So, let's start up from the number one. Uh, first place, were on the outside of the temple or around. If you look at the map, it will help you to understand. There will be number one there, and the number one refers to this number one word on the outside of the temple all around. And second is the gate of the outer court which faced the east, right? So you can look at the map and find number two there, right? So God brought him to there. The third is the outer court and a pavement. Outer court and the pavement. So if you look, if you look at the yeah, if you look at the map, right? The, uh, God brought brought him into the, uh, the east side gate, right? And enter it, and then goes up to north to go through the these uh, chambers and the pavement, right? And then fourth is the gate of the outer court, which faces uh, the north, right? The so fourth is here, right? Fourth is there. And the fifth is the gate of the outer court which faced the south. So from here, God took you all the way down to south. Right? Fifth is here. And sixth is the gate of inner court which faced the, faced the south. So from here, uh, he entered into the temple through here, right? Inner court. And uh, uh, seven is the gate of the inner court which faced east. So from here, Go to the east, seventh is here. Right? To look around there. And the eighth is the gate of the inner court which faces the north. So uh, then go north to here, eighth. Right? And ninth is the chamber where the bond offering is rinsed. So it's the uh, little room above this place, there's a nine, right? Little room that rinse the bond offering uh, sacrifices. And then number 10, number 10 is chamber for the priest who keep charge of the temple and the chamber of the priest who keep charge of the altar. So number 10 is, you can see on the map, it's here. Right? 11 is the gate of the porch of the temple. Gate of the porch of the temple. So 11 is now inside here. And 12 is the sanctuary and the most holy place. So you can see that he goes in now. The thirteen is the side chamber all around the temple and the court of twenty cubits in width. Uh, can you find thirteen? Yeah, thirteen is here, right? Thirteen is here. So uh, is according to the arrow there, right? It's, it's, it means that the, he went out to the, uh, the from the te temple and go around, right? Go around to go to 13, number 13. And the number 14 is a separate area toward the west, 
and the size of the temple. So now he came to this number 14 here, right? And the 15 is the inside of the sanctuary where cherubim and palm tree are carved. Right? Uh, 15 is uh, again inside the temple, so goes in again, right? Here is the 15. And 16 is the altar of the wood, door of the nave, and the sanctuary, and the thresh threshold of wood, right? So it's where normally the altar of incense is located in the tabernacle, right? And the 17th was the holy chamber of the priest. Holy chamber of the priest. So now he came out, right? Uh, and then number 17 is here. Number 18 is the measurement of the wall around the temple. Can you see number 18? which face the east and the cold. So number 20 is also here, right? And then number 21 is the boiling places for the priest. Boiling places of the priest. Uh, yeah, 21 is right back here, right? 21. 22 is boiling place for the sacrifices of the people. Number 22 is here, right? All these four corners is number 22. Number 23 is the door of the temple. Door of the temple. So can anyone see number 23? Yes. Oh, inside blue. Oh, here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 23 is there. Now, Korean lecture note has a 24 and 25th, and in which one, somehow, we stop, right? So 24 is outer gate which faces the east. Outer gate which faces the east. Here once again, right? Outer gate which faces the east. So it comes back, right? right? Outer gate which faces the east. So the, the referring scripture is Ezekiel, Chapter 47, verse 2. Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 2. The last 25th place is the banks of the river. Banks of the river. Refer, uh, the scripture, relevant scripture is Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 3 to 12. Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 3 to 12. So today I'm going to uh, stop here and I will continue next week about the measurement because uh, I can't do the measurement today but it may uh, it may give you a lot of headaches, right? So I will pause it here, right? I will pause here and continue about this measurement. So next week we will learn about finger, we will learn about palm, right? We will learn about uh, what? Cubit, right? We will learn about rock. Right? We will learn about the rock. Right? So we will learn about, about that next week and we will uh, go through next week. However, uh, I want to finish with uh, this. Have you ever thought about the when Nissan cycle was used in Jewish history, Israel, the history of Israel, and the when Tishri cycle was mainly used? Let me explain, right? Before the Exodus, God appeared to Aaron and Moses and said, This month shall be your first month, right? So God gave them, God launched a new year for them, right? Today is the first day of the first month, January 1st, right? This is a New Year's Day, so you should start calculating from today onward, 
right? That was the first day of Nisan, right? So before the Exodus, right before the Exodus, God gave them a Nisan cyclic calendar, right? Or God reminded them, right? God reminded the people of Israel about Nisan cycle calendar. Therefore, from 1446 BC, right, the time, the year when the Exodus was happened, right? Uh, the people of Israel used, or the Bible is uh, being calculated according to Nissan cycle calendar, right? Am I right? But after they entered the land of Canaan, there was uh, uh, 340 years of the time of Judges. When the time of Judges is finished, what happened? The kingdom was established. And do you know uh, for the king's regular years, the people of Israel used Tishri cycle calendar to calculate it, isn't it? So when King Saul became a king, that was 1050 BC, 1050 BC, right? And the southern Judah king always used this Tishri cycle, right? And the southern Judah was the, uh, the main character, right? Main the, the, the kingdom that plays a main role in the Bible, right? That brings the God's covenant, right? Therefore, from 1050 BC, right? The year, or when we say the king's year, is all calculated on, according to Tishri cycle, Tishri cycle. 1050 BC, when King Saul became a king, is according to Tishri cycle calendar, right? He cannot become a king according to Nissan cycle. King David became a king 1010 BC is also Tishri cycle calendar. Solomon became a king 1970 uh, BC is also uh, the, the, the Tishri cycle calendar, right? However, 5A6 BC, 5A6 BC was the kingdom of Israel, right? Nation of Israel or kingdom of Israel was collapsed. And there was there is no more kingdom. Therefore, during the uh, this Babylonian captivity, right? Well, well, according to the according to uh, these prophets, but prophet Ezekiel that we are learning, right? Prophet Ezekiel used this sun side to I mean, because there was no king to refer to, right? There was no king to refer to. So after the destruction of the kingdom of Israel, that the uh, Bible changed back to the sun cycle uh, system. This is important, Pastor Philip said, and it will be explained in book number 11. So I cannot explain any further. But we know that, I mean, please know that, ah, there is a, ch there is a time that this uh, cycle is being changed. We still say it's the 1050 BC for our convenience. However, we should know that when we say 1050 BC, 1010 BC, 970 BC, it's all according to tissue cycle. But when we say 1446 BC or 1406 BC, right, it's, it's according to uh, Nissan cycle calendar. And also after 586 BC, right, when we talk about Ezekiel temple or prophet Ezekiel, Right? Prophet is can use Nissan side calendar. So there is about six months difference. I think uh, that will, I can explain more uh, when the book 11 is uh, published. But please know that uh, it is one of the important facts that matter in book 11 regarding to Ezekiel Temple. Also, uh, book 11, I'm no, sorry, the Ezekiel Temple, the, in, in the, uh, during this, the vision of the Ezekiel Temple, God used Number 25 or not? Number 25 or not? Number 25 is what? A half of Jubilee, isn't it? Not a half of 50, right? Not half of Jubilee, right? So, uh, number 25 is used a lot. Uh, yes, we can still see the map here, right? How many places God brought him to see? 25 places, right? This is, this, this is not a coincidence, right? God uh, showed, God brought Prophet Ezekiel 25 times, right? And then uh, the Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1, he said, In the 
25th year of our exile. Right? 25th year of our exile. So, uh, number 25 is being used a lot uh, in relation to Ezekiel Temple explanation. And that will also be uh, explained uh, in, uh, through the 11th book. But please know that uh, Ezekiel Temple is uh, related to number 25, which is a half of the Jubilee. Right? So, so today, I think that's enough. <coughs> and today's main uh, uh, message is we have to become holy, right? Our words, our deeds, our thoughts, our entire being must become holy in order to become a holy temple for God and in order to enter New Jerusalem. So let's remember and let's give thanks.